So what happened when these Indo-Greek people came, they were very much influenced with the Indian society. They Indianized themselves. There's a lot of impact on, the, on these people. Hello, dear aspirants. Uh, welcome to Plutus IS. Today, we are going to discuss post modern art. Okay. And in this, first of all, I would like to show you one person and let us see whether you are able to this question or okay this is a uiq the question is consider the following statement there are three statements and there are four options we have to answer this question okay so see uh mathra art had more influences from central asian art as compared to gandhar art okay the second statement is Math amravati school consisted of only buddhist art and the third statement is Matra art was mainly made of white marble and Amaravati with white spotted trade There are three options, only three. Only a statement three is correct. Option one. Then the second one and three. One and three are correct. Then everyone is correct. And then finally, none of the statements are correct from this one. So please comment. On the link that which of the answer is of the option is correct from the, uh, this question okay so this is from this is just objective type question that i have made uh, there is another question from postmodern art and this question had been asked in gs paper one also and also in history optional paper okay so this is from art and culture the, the question says mathra school was a great center of art and sculpture during the early historic period how did it differ from the Randhar school? Okay, this is the question. And how should we approach this question? So we should uh, start writing since the word limit is 150 words only. So we should write an introduction. We should write an introduction. And in this introduction, we should mention three schools of art. Three schools of art in the postmodern period. The postmodern period. And what is this postmodern period? This postmodern period will start after 185 when the modern empire will decline till the foundation of Gupta Empire. Okay, till the foundation of Gupta Empire. And in this there were these are the states. Okay. Then after we should start saying we will write about three schools, then we will write about Mathra school. So what is the, the, the body? In the body, the first part will be features of Mathra school. Features of Mathra school. Then second part of our answer will be the features of Randhar school. Features of Randhar school. And the third part should be what is the different? Different between both school. And then we should write and we should write a conclusion. So this is the way we should approach this question. So let us see the differences how these three schools were founded and what is the main thing. So we know that after the decline of Maurya, when the modern empire was declined in 185 BC, especially the 10th modern ruler, Bridharth was killed by his commander-in-chief and minister Pushmitra Sung. And after that, a new dynasty, the Sung dynasty was established in India. So in the postmodern period after 185, the whole India was divided into three parts. The whole India was divided into three parts. Part one, especially one were the Indian successors in which we include the Sung, Tanam and Satvanas. Okay. The Sung were ruling in these regions. Tanba was limited to this and Satvana was ruling in these regions of India. Okay. There were the foreign successors called Indo-Greek, Sat, Parthians and Kusant. These are the people who are coming from these sides. And they are from this side. They have been settled in these regions of India. They settled in these regions of India. So these were the four people 
Indo Greek came first, then we have South, then we have Parthians, and then Kusan. And then we have the South Indian independent states in the Sangam is that was Chera, Pandya, and Sola. Okay. So these were three main divisions of postmodern period in political perspective. Okay. So what happened when these Indo Greek people came? They were very much influenced with the Indian society. They Indianized themselves. There's a lot of impact on the on these people. Their impact is visible on society. Their impact is visible on Buddhism also. During this time, only in the postmodern period, especially when the fourth Buddhist council was held in 72 AD at Kulnaban uh, at Kulnaban in Sri near Sri Nagar in the reign of Manishka of Kusan dynasty, we see that there is a split between Buddhism. Himyan and Mahaya. So there were many changes were taking place at this time. Okay. So one such changes apart from all these changes were the changes in the art. So the postmodern art comprised of three different aspects. So there were three different schools in the postmodern art. School one was Gandhar. School one was Gandhar, which was started, which was started by Indo Greek. And followed by Kusan, and followed by Kusan, we see major differences in this period in the Gandhar art. Then the second was Mathura, which was started and patronized by Kusan Empire. Okay, and the third is Amravati, which was especially followed and started by Satvanaj, Satvana, and Itshvaku. It's so these are the major changes. So what is the main points that we are going to discuss today? What is the main features of this Gandhar, Mathura, and Amravati art? Is that in the Gandhar art we find a gold reliquary is here. Okay, we find that there is a anthropomorphic traditions have been followed from Central Asia to Gandhar, from Central Asia to Gandhar. Buddha had been defined. Buddha had been defined be the youthful, youthful like Apollo, like Apollo was represented as youth god in Greco Roman Empire. So Buddha is represented like one. Buddha is dressed in a transparent garment. So Buddha is dressed in a transparent garment, and then his standing figure is found here. His standing figure is found in the Gandhar school of art. So these are the important features of Gandhar school of arts. We find. Hello, behind the head of Buddha, a curly hair is found, and in the Parthian style, the curly hair of Buddha is found in the Parthian style, and then we find the drapery. The Hellenistic cultures have been seen in the Gandhar school. These are the examples of Gandhar school. You can say that this hello is found here in the in the Gandhar schools in the gold statue. These are the important. Uh, Pictures and sculptures have been found from Gandhar school. This is a curly hair of Buddha. This is a curly hair of Buddha. So these are the major changes that we are going to see in the postmodern period, especially in the Gandhar art. So this Gandhar art was highly influenced by the Buddhist sculpture. Okay. So now we will see the other art that is Mathura. So do you know in Mathura art we have also found some differences, and Mathura art is divided into three parts. It is for three important religion. Religion one is Buddhist, so this is related to Buddhism. Other we have Jainism. So Jainism source is also available, and then Brahmanical tradition is also fine. Means Hindu, the Hindu gods are also fine in the Mathura art. So if we talk about Buddha first, okay. The Buddha idols. There are two different features in the Mathura art. What is the main feature in the Buddha idols? We have found Buddha in the two postures. One in the standing, Buddha is in the standing position, and other is in the sitting position. Okay, standing and sitting. Then you find Buddha sitting under a Bodhi tree sculpture is also fine. That he is sitting under a Bodhi tree is one such examples for us. Then what you find? We also find that in the right hand we have a abhay posture, which was not seen in the Gandhar art. In the right hand, he had a abhay posture like this one that he is giving a blessing to the people. Okay, we will see this. Ah, uh, then we also find Dharma Chakra is there, and then head is seven sometimes. Okay, head is seven except for one lord, 
and it was basically made of white spotted red white spotted red stone so this is about buddhism if you see these pictures these are the examples where buddha is seen like giving lessons okay this is from mathura school and in the mathura school these are the examples that he is sitting in a abhay so that giving the blessing to the people okay at this time do you know what happened in the buddhism there were two different branches hinayana and mahayana hinayan people believe that buddha is as a teacher they have to accept the original teachings of buddha whereas mahayana people is to believe that buddha as a god that is why idol worship started by this people okay so this is examples this is the hair styles and abhay pochas styles have been there in this writings apart from it we also see that buddha had been represented on the coins of kusan on the gold coins of kusan represents buddha statue so this is a buddha represented on the gold coin of kanishka so these are the examples that we are going to see from here if we see the other topic the mathura school only is the brahmanical traditions the so mathura school it does not only talk about uh, the buddhist as grandha school was talking about the buddhism only mathura school will have jainism also that parsamnath and adinath image have been made the disamnath image have been sculpture in this time but these are not available till this time in original forms okay in the brahmanical tradition what we find we have found surya we have found surya riding a chariot rath chala rahe hain okay then we have found balram with heavy turban on his head Sarasati is seated with manuscript as it is shown in the contemporary India how Sarasati god is depicted in the Indian culture. So she was shown in the post-modern period with the manuscript in her hand. Durga is defined as a killer of buffalo demon that is Bhaisa Sur. So uh, especially if you go to Dasara, you will find Durga everywhere in Indian culture. In every colony, you will find a statue of Durga during the uh, Navratri. and you find that durga has been has been killing had been killing a bhaisa so that is a uh, buffalo demons okay and then we have found the images of some rulers also like kanishka and bhima tridipisha okay so let us see some brahmanical image from this topic of mathura so this is a god of fertility which is available from mathura this is saraswati she is playing uh, she has manuscript and the and then this is a kartike and agni kartike and agni is a god this is vasudev god this is vasudev god and these are the gods of rulers so it is a kanishka the headless kanishka and this is bhima tadipishas okay so these are the images of post mauryan period and especially of mathura art so what have we seen the gandha raj was basically reflected a buddhism from the greco roman perspective especially but here in mathura we have found that greco roman influence the central asian influence have been there but the indian influence had been there so mathura art is of the myths art which not only talks about buddhism but it also talks about jainism and brahmanism so this is what we have seen in the mathura art if we see the amravati art in the amravati art what we know that this had been patronized by satvahan and taken up by itswatu okay so especially this art was made of basically white marbles this art was made of basically white marbles so this art was basically made of white marble other important feature of this art is that it had been looking like a naturalistic in manner the naturalistic idea the no spiritual idea is shown in this writing and we see that the most of the statues of buddhism the most of the statues and the sculptures and the statues of buddhism have been taken from the life of buddha and jatak story life of buddha and jatak stories Buddha is seen both in the human and animal form. That we know that, in especially if we discuss about the Jatak, which talks about the previous life of Buddha, in which the Buddha had been born in the animal forms. Many of the previous life of Buddha is depicted in the animal form. So Buddha images are found both in human and animal form, and this talks about religious and secular images. Okay, so this does not only talk about this one. Religious and secular images will be. One such example. So let us see some of the pictures from Amravati art. So this is a stupa. This is a stupa made at Amravati from this period. This is a Amravati Buddha where you find that the Indian depictions have been there. Is it? The Indian god has been represented in this case. So it's Amravati art. We have a twin Maha 
Mahamaya dreams. We know that when Buddha, uh, there's a story about Mahamaya that one day she was sleeping and she dreamed that elephant come with a lotus and uh, she dreamed that a elephant came with lotus and then he elephant entered into the bomb of Mahamaya and after that Buddha was born. So this is also the story. This is a very nice sculpture from Amravati art and this is a Buddha statue at Amravati and this is a one such examples we find about that how much this art was different okay so this is the main differences between three arts we have discussed till now now i will i would like to go to the question that we were discussing in the first place okay so if you see questions now can you solve this question this question especially the question one is matra art had more influences from central asian art as compared to gandhar art no, because Gandhar art was more influenced by a Central Asian art as compared to Matra. So statement one will be incorrect. Statement one will be incorrect. If we see the other statement, Matra school consists of only Buddhist art. No, we have a secular image here found at this art. So we cannot say this statement is also false. Or the statement is Matra art was mainly made of white marble matra as was made of white marble and amravati with the white spotted red stone so if you see this i would like to take you to the page if you find it matra art was made of white spotted marble while amravati was was made of white marble okay so one so this statement will also be false because amravati art was made of white marble and Matra art was made of is, uh, red, is, uh, especially white spotted red stone. So this statement will also be false. So our answer will be none. D will be the answer of this question. Okay. And same if, if you go to the subjective wise question. So in this question, we have the same perspective that how we are here going to define the features of Matra that we discussed in, the, in, the, in that page. Then we will talk about the features of Gandhar art. And then we will talk about the differences between that. And we will say that apart from the many similarities and the differences, apart from many similarities and the differences, it, uh, both schools, both school, uh, both school that is Mathra and um, uh, Gandhar played a very important role in the development of art and culture in the postmodern period along with Amravati art. So this is the way we can conclude our answer. Okay. So please comment if there is any question from your side and uh, I will be uh, highly obliged like I will be answering your question. Uh, I will be happy to answer your question and if you want me to make any videos or any such topic of Indian history related to uh, Indian history and world history related to UPSC preparation, please feel free to comment. I will be making videos shortly on that topic. Okay, we'll see you on the other video. Thank you so much. Thank you.